Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by this amazing AI study tool called Visdolia. At the end of this session, I would provide you with the link for the practice session via Visdolia, which will help you in understanding this topic much better. So, in continuation with the Hodgkin's disease, I'm sure by looking at the illustrations now, you would have understood that I will be discussing the morphology of Hodgkin's disease in great detail. Let us have a quick recap as to how we classify Hodgkin lymphoma into classical Hodgkin lymphoma and nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. Classical Hodgkin lymphoma has four subtypes, nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte rich and lymphocyte depleted. Let us learn about these entities in more detail. The most important thing we need to understand that to diagnose Hodgkin lymphoma, identification of the Reed-Sternberg cells and its variants is very, very essential. It's not just identifying the Reed-Sternberg cells, it is also you have to identify them in the background of non-neoplastic inflammatory cells. If you are here for the first time, I would suggest you to go back and watch my previous video on pathogenesis of Hodgkin lymphoma. Well, as I told you, Reed-Sternberg cell is absolutely essential for diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma. And we know that Reed-Sternberg cell is a large cell, often more than 50 microns in diameter which has abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, binucleated mirror image like nuclei with a prominent inclusion like nucleoli. Okay? Because these nuclei looks like that of the eyes of the owl, this is often referred to as owl's eye nuclei or owl's eye appearance. Now we also need to know that there are certain variants of reed sternberg cells. What what you saw in the previous slide was the classical variant of Reed-Sternberg cell. So, what are all the other variants? First one is mononuclear variant. This is also a large cell with a single round to oval nucleus with prominent eosinophilic nucleoli. It's very, very important to note that to look for prominent inclusion like eosinophilic nucleoli. And this nucleoli itself is around about the size of an RBCR a small lymphocyte. So, this type of uh, variant of RSL is seen often in mixed cellularity and lymphocyte-rich subtype. The next one is a lacunar cell which has a lobated nuclei. Okay, The nuclei is lobated. Prominent nuclei just like what you see in classical and the mononuclear ones. The cytoplasm is very delicate and pale. But what is important to note here is that this is often retracted. Okay, the cytoplasm is retracted and it creates a space surrounding it. Okay, it looks like as if the cell is in the lacune. So, this is basically a fixation artifact and the RS cell is known as lacunar cell. Lacunar variant of RS cell, which is commonly seen in nodular sclerosis supply. The third one is a mummified cell. The cells have a condensed cytoplasm and hypnotic nuclei. Okay, so these are mummified cells. There is another variant called pleomorphic Reed Sternberg cell, which has multiple irregular nuclei with prominent eosinophilic nucleoli, as we have mentioned earlier. This kind of, uh, no, uh, this variant of RSL is seen in lymphocyte depletion subtype. The last variant you need to know is lymphohistiocytic variant. This variant has small nuclei with lobulated nucleus. Okay, the nucleus is lobulated. Though it is small, it is lobulated. It resembles as if you are looking at the kernel of the popcorn. And that is the reason why these are also referred to as popcorn cells. Okay, the nucleoli is small. It's not like what you see, you know, prominent eosinophilic inclusion like nucleoli as you saw in the earlier variants, okay. These are small nucleoli. This kind of reed sternberg cell is seen in lymphocyte predominance subtype or the lymphocyte predominant subtype. So, sometimes there might, there are conditions which have these large cells which look like reed sternberg cells and these are called as reed sternberg like cells which is often seen in infectious mononucleosis, some solid tissue cancers and large cell non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Okay, They are not reed sternberg cells but then they look like reed sternberg cells. Of course, immunophenotyping will help in differentiating between these and the uh, 
typical Reedstown bug cells, which we'll be discussing a bit later. Now, coming back to the classification, we know that the classical Hodgkin lymphoma is categorized into nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte rich, and lymphocyte depleted one. So, let's talk about nodular sclerosis type of Hodgkin lymphoma. This is the most common form of Hodgkin lymphoma. It accounts to around 65 to 70 percent of cases. The characteristic feature of histologically, the characteristic feature is the presence of lacunar variant of reed Sternberg cells. We have seen earlier, right? The lacunar variant, along with the lacunar variant of RS cells, you should see position of collagen in bands that divide the lymph nodes into various circumscribed nodules, uncommonly associated with Epstein Barr virus infection. So, this is the nodular sclerosis which I was mentioning. Look at this, the collagen, you know, it forms bands within the lymph node which divides the lymph node into small nodules. So, nodular sclerosis, the lower power view showing the collagen bands and these nodules of lymphocytes along with the characteristic reed Sternberg cells. So, these are the characteristic reed Sternberg cells which have lacunae. Okay, that's the mononuclear one. That is another mononuclear variant with a prominent eosinophilic inclusion like nucleoli. But then can you make out these lacunar spaces? So, this is very typical of nodular sclerosis type of Hodgkin lymphoma. Okay, and the reed Sternberg cells typically they are positive for Pax5. And this Pax5 is a B cell transcription factor. We are talking about immunohistochemistry. Okay, immunohistochemistry of Pax5 is positive. And the most important one is it is positive for CD15 and CD20. It is negative for B cell markers because we have seen, we have understood during pathogenesis that it loses B cell you no know, markers. It uh, other uh, it is also negative for T cell markers and also for the leukocyte common antigen, which is CD45. And this phenotype is called as classic immunophenotypic profile. That being positive for Pax5, which is a B cell transcription factor, and being positive for 15 and 30, negative for B cell markers. Okay, that is very important when you are looking at immunophenotyping of Hodgkin lymphoma, particularly the classical Hodgkin lymphoma. The second important classical uh, Hodgkin lymphoma subtype is a mixed cellularity, which accounts for around 20 25% of cases. The feature histologically it is seen, you know, diff the lymph node is diffusely effaced by a heterogeneous cellular infiltrate. When I say heterogeneous, it means it has all the kinds of uh, cells which includes T cells, which includes you know, eosinophils. So, look at this, these are eosinophils, you are seeing plasma cells, you are seeing macrophages, but mixed with your classical type of reed Turnberg cells as well as the mononuclear cells. Okay, The mononuclear variant is also referred to as hot skin cell. Remember, this is known as hot skin cell. You have classical binucleated reed Sternberg cell as well as the mononuclear hot skin cell. The reed Sternberg cells, they are infected with Epstein-Barr virus in around 70% of cases. Moving on to the third variant of uh, the subtype of classical hot skin lymphoma, which is lymphocyte rich. That's an uncommon form. The characteristic histological feature is that you find reactive lymphocytes that will make up the majority of the cellular infiltrate. The lymph nodes are diffusely effaced, but sometimes it can be vaguely nodular. That's because of presence of residual B cell follicles, which can be seen uncommonly. Okay? The mononuclear variants and the classical diagnostic reed Sternberg cells can be seen. And immunohistochemically, it has classic immunophenotypic profile that is positive for Pax5, CD15, CD30 positive and negative for B cell markers. It is associated with Epstein-Barr virus in around 40% of cases. The most important thing to note about this variant is that it has a very good to excellent prognosis. The last variant of classical Hodgkin lymphoma is a lymphocyte depleted variant. It is the least common variant, accounting to around less than 5% of cases. The feature is that you have paucity of lymphocytes and a relative abundance of reed Sternberg cells, particularly the pleomorphic variant. Right? Of course, the phenotyping is very like that of a classic RSL. 
it is associated in ebv in around 90 percent of cases the lymphocyte depleted one is associated with ebv in around 90 percent of cases these are the kind of you know lymphomas which are found in older adults in hiv positive individuals of any age okay and in individuals living in lower income countries the uh, prognosis or outcome is less favorable as compared to that of other kinds of hodgkin lymphoma now moving on to the non-classical hodgkin lymphoma or the nodular lymphocyte predominant hodgkin lymphoma this is an uncommon form around five percent of cases are of this type the nodes are effaced okay the, the, the nodes are effaced by nodules that's why it's called nodular lymphocyte nodules of small lymphocytes though it has nodules it does not have you know, those collagen bands that's why it is not nodular sclerosis it is just nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma where the nodules of small lymphocytes are admixed with variable number of macrophages and the variant of RSL you find here is the lymphocyte and histiocytic variant LMH variant with multi-lobed nuclei resembling that of popcorn kernel right popcorn cells seen in nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma now why it is nodular the reason is because of presence of expanded B follicles, which is populated by these variants of RS cells, numerous VRQ B cells and follicular dendritic cells. Okay, very very rarely uh, EBV is associated with this kind of this type of Hodgkin lymphoma. The immunophenotype. Okay, remember the immunophenotype is different from that of the classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Okay, because these variants, the L and H variants, express B cell markers. Normally, in the classical Hodgkin lymphoma, you should not see B cell marker, right? That's what we learnt in pathogenesis. Whereas here, it expresses B cell markers, typical of germinal center B cells. That's why it's positive for CD20 and BCL6. And more importantly, they are negative for CD15 and CD30. That's a classic immunophenotypic profile of classical Hodgkin lymphoma, right? So, this is the difference. Immunophenotypically, nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, they express B cell markers. Now, why is that? Because we have studied that it should not express B cell markers. The RSLs, okay, will not express B cell markers. But what really happens here is that the immunoglobulin H gene, the immunoglobulin heavy gene of this variant of RSL, you know, it still shows ongoing somatic hypermutation. And that is why, you know, they mark these cells as transformed germinal center B cells. Okay, it's, it has still retained the B cell marker. Okay, you remember the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma retains the B cell marker does not have CD15 and CD30. Now, let's quickly summarize what we have learned so far. Type of uh, R, uh, cell which is essential for diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma? Yes, it is reed sternberg cell. Lacunar cells are seen in nodular sclerosis. The most common form of Hodgkin lymphoma is nodular sclerosis. Again, the least common form of Hodgkin lymphoma is lymphocyte depletion type. And remember, it is the Epstein-Barr virus which is associated with Hodgkin lymphoma. And the non-classic variant is nodular lymphocyte predominance, Hodgkin lymphoma. And remember, it is the reactive lymphocytes which forms the majority of the infiltrate in which subtype, that's in lymphocyte-rich Hodgkin lymphoma. B cell markers which are expressed by L and H variant, that is CD20 and BCL6. Remember, these B cell markers should not be seen in any of the subtypes of classical Hodgkin lymphoma you find B cell transcription factor. Okay, what is that? That is PAX5. The B cell transcription factor, which is PAX5, is found in classical reed sternberg cells. Okay, and if you want to see two markers, if you want to say or diagnose Hodgkin lymphoma or diagnose reed sternberg cells by two markers and those are CD15 and CD30, remember they are positive only in classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So, with this, I complete the morphology of Hodgkin lymphoma. I would you know, suggest you to you know, click on the link below in the description as well as in the pinned comment for you to work on various multiple choice questions via Wisdolia where you can take these practices. You know, make sure that you go through these practice tests so that your learning becomes more meaningful. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries. Consider subscribing. 
and sharing if you find this video useful. In the next session, I'll be discussing about the clinical features and most importantly, staging of Hodgkin lymphoma. Thank you. Bye-bye.